Good morning, folks. We've got space weather, a note on seismic activity, top science news, and an observer's event coming up in a couple hours. We'll get to all of it, but we're starting with the last 24 hours on our star and 193 angstroms from ionized iron in the stellar corona. We have incoming sunspots, a coronal hole, plenty of plasma filaments, but so far, Earth is fairly clear of the interplanetary shock waves. The incoming sunspots have gone fairly quiet when they're facing Earth, which is sort of expected. Recall that our next uptick should run from as early as the end of July to nearly October in the 5.9 month activity cycle, but we also still have the filaments and this coronal hole which will amplify geospace in about two or three days. Geospace is already slightly enhanced as a minor pre-stream begins, with density dropping out and plasma speed jumping up, but only from ultra-low up to normal range so far eyes on several space weather features here as we begin another week. We also wanted to hit the earthquakes as we come to the South Atlantic. Ever since that deep blood echo quake in Brazil three days ago, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge has been rocking. Same with the Indian and Antarctic ridges of the southern waters, but none more than here. Hopefully, it is just this moderate uptick in magnitude there. If anyone around the world saw our 2019 infometry plasma cosmology, you almost certainly remember the bit about the Musk filament, which is actually an electric current sheet with perpendicular magnetic fields cutting through. Today, we've got confirmation of the sheet-like nature in a deep dive analysis of what used to be called the perfect filament. Up next, just a quick smack to the idea that the modern western U.S. drought is some kind of record. It's not even the worst drought of the last 2,000 years. Folks, drought cycles can be seasonal, annual, decadal, decadal harmonic, centennial, or millennial. What we've got on Earth right now doesn't even come close to stacking up. Up next, we're discussing the snowball Earth scenario, and if you didn't know, there's a huge debate about whether an ice-free warm belt existed at the equator, which would explain how well some species managed to survive the ice world. Nope, turns out the species were simply resilient, because there's no way to actually get that warm equatorial region when the clouds and albedo are thrown into the mix. This planet is indeed capable of total snowball Earth state. And finally, those who are studying our new book are getting a major dose of pole to equator solar climate forcing. Today, it's not the traveling waves in the ionosphere, but direct meridional currents from the polar region. Meridional meaning along the meridian, longitude. It's a critical aspect of touching the global atmosphere despite the preferred space weather bombardment of the polar and auroral regions at high latitude. And interestingly, these currents don't work as fast as the instantaneous forcing we have also been discussing of late. Resolution here is about one hour. Nice cherry on top of the latest solar forcing discoveries. Folks on our email list know we've got Tai Chi here today in the springs. Going to be a scorcher out there, so come prepared. And if you're confused at the moment, all of our local events and future events for Observer Ranch will be notified through our email list. You can join it at the link below. And by the way, it's also a good backup means of disseminating information if YouTube decides I don't fit the narrative and gives us the boot. Small event today, free event, going to do some Tai Chi in the park. We greatly appreciate your support. Join our email list if you feel moved. We've got shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.